Hi, it's the 24th of August, 2024. Today, my dog's birthday. Yes, it is. Happy birthday, little Sky. That four years old today. Yes, good dog. Anyway, I've been uh, taking iodine lugols now, drops, since the 15th of August, watching YouTube videos and reading up articles and studies about iodine and how much you can take. And I've made a list. This is a list of good facts I found. I've got four pages here together. Three and a half, really. So I'm going to read them out now and go through them all with you. For many years, iodine was used as a mainstay medical treatment for lots of different ailments. Iodine is used by the body for a host of things, not just the thyroid gland. It's beneficial to the skin, the muscles, the eyes, the brain, the heart, the liver. Basically every single cell in the body needs iodine in order for the body to thrive and work at peak optimal performance for maximum health. So the studies I've read and things I've been listening to by experts it's a very important nutrient for health. You need to have optimal amounts of iodine to have optimal health. It is believed that iodine went out of favour with the medical industry for one simple reason. Iodine cannot be patented, so it does not make money for the medical industry. Well, that makes sense, and that seems to be going on with a lot of things. Things have been um, made out to be bad. A bit wonky. Things have been made out to be bad for people now, which used to be a mainstay. Like um, boron, is it? The, the detergent for washing clothes. No smell to it, cleans the clothes brilliantly. And they've demonised that. That's bad for you, no? They've outcast it. It's banned in many countries, no? Anyway. Medicines have been made to replace most of all the previous uses of iodine. Even if the outcomes of using medications were not as good as the outcomes of using iodine. Next one. The most well-known use for iodine is for treatment of the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. Also to cure a thyroid goiter. This is where the thyroid has grown in size due to the low levels of iodine. It grows bigger so that the thyroid can attract more iodine. This was a common disorder years ago in places where there was lack of iodine in the soil. Goitre was cured by adding iodine to salt and to bread and with iodine supplements. There was, an, there was an experiment done in 1948 by Wolf Shakov, where he tested high intakes of iodine on rats, which caused them to develop large goitres on their thyroids. But the experiment was flawed because the study was extrapolated to humans without any supporting evidence that this could be reproduced in humans. Flawed study published it, everyone started thinking, oh, higher doses of iodine is bad. Flawed study. Although high doses of iodine in humans does initially cause an iodine deficient thyroid gland to expand in order to be able to absorb the more available iodine. This is short lived and usually lasts between 26 to 40 hours. After that, high doses of iodine have no negative effect on the thyroid gland or anywhere else in the human body. The Wolf psych of effect has never been scientifically proven. In fact, it has been disproven many times. The conclusion is this. The Wolf psych of effect 
as a political manoeuvre to help keep the excellent value of Lugal's iodine as a natural supplement hidden. Still to this day, many medical practitioners will say iodine is dangerous to use for the thyroid in higher amounts than the RDA. The amount of iodine recommended by governments for safe use has been put at very low levels. In the 1970s, iodine that had previously been added to flour and bread was removed and replaced with bromine. Trouble is, bromine competes with iodine so the thyroid gland can become filled with bromine instead of iodine, which makes people unwell. Also fluoride and chlorine also compete with iodine. Fluoride and chlorine uses have increased through the years, while iodine uses have dramatically decreased. Since the 1970s, all major illnesses have increased dramatically. These include heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety, dementia, plus many, many more. Coincidentally, following iodine's use decreasing dramatically. Before antibiotics were invented, iodine was used like an antibiotic and cured people of many things. The difference with iodine to antibiotics is that bacteria and viruses can never build up to a resistance to it. That's a major thing, that, isn't it? Because we've developed resistance to antibiotics. So the more serious illnesses we get in, they're becoming harder to cure. So while antibiotics may have been effective years ago, maybe as effective as iodine, now they're probably a lot less effective. I will read on. When a person has good amounts of iodine in the body, they will have a strong, powerful digestion, able to tolerate bacteria, viruses and fungi, and they will really get sick. Iodine is needed for good stomach acid and to create a low pH level. It's needed to make strong, healthy bile so the stomach can digest food really well. With low levels of iodine, people develop poor digestion and have weak stomach acid and weak bile. Foods will not be digested well allergy symptoms will appear and autoimmune diseases will occur. What's he looking at a dog? What can you hear? Another dog, no? Iodine is found in high concentrations in the ovaries, breasts and the prostate gland. The ovaries are also said to be able to make thyroid hormones. Not so fast, correct, but that's what I've read. When health declines due to iodine deficiency, all of the body's main organs, including the brain, will suffer. The lymphatic system will not work as well and could become sluggish. Glands throughout the body will suffer. Cysts will start to grow on glands, usually starting with the thyroid gland, then into the breasts, or the prostrate gland. Soft, small cysts turn into harder nodules which turn into hyperplastic precancerous cysts. If these are not caught early, cancer will develop. Now this could be the cause of cancer. Lack of iodine. The more I read to you now, the more you might also agree. Because iodine seems to be the major 
nutrient in the body for detox in the body, ridding it of viruses, bacteria and heavy metals. Without enough iodine, the body becomes sicker, much sicker. The range of health problems that occur due to a deficiency in iodine is vast. Hyperthyroidism causes weight gain. And obesity is well documented as causing many health problems. But the obes obesity was probably caused by a deficiency in iodine in the first place. So people getting fat, they blame in carbohydrates, they blame on the diet, that's like standard, isn't it? But it could also be to do with low iodine. You get deficiency of iodine, you put on weight, weight gain. Very hard to get rid of the weight gain when you've got a deficiency in iodine. Even when you're on very low calorie diet, you're still putting on weight. Because the body is malfunctioning. Now when you get obese, you get all these health problems, which is well documented, including heart disease, diabetes, everything. And if you remember during the uh, virus that we're not allowed to name, we begin with C, O, V and R, I, D. The main danger was for obese people. So obesity is a bad thing. Holistic practitioners have been using iodine to help people recover from chronic chest infections, viruses, chronic flu bouts, and SARS viruses, including C, O, V, I, and E. They have been getting far better outcomes than regular medical practitioners have. That's the truth, there is mine. The use of iodine has been clearly shown to protect and to heal the body. Yet during COVID, governments shut down any discussions about alternative treatments. I wonder why that is. I wonder why we weren't allowed to talk about it. And even me now is scared to say the name. We were banned from talking about any other treatments. I saw lots of videos being taken down. And it turns out now, looking back, it's been shown that them alternative treatments would have helped. So why were we banned? We even mentioned we could have used them along with a jibby jabby, which turned out to be bloody more dangerous than the, than the actual thing itself. Out of all the vitamins and minerals in the body, iodine stands out as the main one for killing bacteria, viruses and fungal infections. Iodine can cure a stomach infection called H. pylori, Helibacter pylori, where antibiotics have hit and miss success. And the chances of H. pylori coming back and becoming resistant to antibiotics are very high. The salivary glands need iodine to function optimally, as does the cerebral spinal fluid. This is interesting now. There is an area in the brain that is associated with Parkinson's disease, where concentrations of iodine is found, high concentrations, and where the cerebral spinal fluid is produced. Imagine that, associated with Parkinson's disease. Now we know that uh, deficiency in iodine is associated with dementia, brain fog, unable to concentrate. Probably is associated with Parkinson's as well then, according to this. Lack of iodine causes depression, anxiety, confusion, brain fog, concentration problems, and in severe cases, causes dementia and Alzheimer's. Iodine deficiency also causes extreme chronic fatigue. 
This is because iodine is needed by every single cell in the body. If iodine is lacking, then energy production for physical and mental activities is greatly reduced. On to my next page. Low iodine is associated with low breast function, low ovarian function and increased cancer risk. In the Great Lakes regions of America, there used to be a lot of people who were developing thyroid goitras due to lack of iodine. There is a high incidence of thyroid deficiency associated with developing goitras. Iodine deficiency is closely associated with breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, stomach cancer and cancer of the esophagus. Healthy levels of iron, vitamin A, vitamin D are needed for the synthesis of iodine. Also, selenium, zinc, magnesium and the B vitamins are needed. Many doctors are completely unaware of the huge importance of getting enough iodine each day. And some actually believe that iodine is not good for you. Above the RDA, I mean. There are lots of poor studies out there saying higher doses above the RDA of iodine is detrimental. But when you sift through these studies, it's clear to see they are incorrect. These studies, you go through them, you find tooth comb and you realise they just, they just show, they just all show just to, just to get news, news reports out there saying that you can't put too much iodine here, you've got to have this tiny amount. And it's just, the amount they're given, just enough to stop goiters forming. When you look at it and add the puzzles, pieces of the puzzle together, it makes you think, doesn't it? it? Makes you think. There is one major nutrient that the body uses to detoxify toxins and kill bacteria, viruses, fungi infections, and most importantly, heavy metals from the body. That one nutrient is iodine. Very, very important nutrient. Could be the most important nutrient in the body. And it could be the one that's been demonized the most. It could be the nutrient that can make everyone really healthy if we all ate more of it. And if we all banned the other things like bromine, chlorine, chloride and fluoride and just got the optimal amounts, made sure everyone got the optimal amounts, but instead it's been demonised. Baffling, baffling, definitely baffling. Doctors should be recommending iodine to all their patients in higher amounts than the very low, inaccurate RDA levels governments have set. In Japan, the average amount of iodine consumed by people a day comes to around 13 milligrams. Although many people there eat a lot more than that. In Japan, women who consume at least 13 milligrams a day or higher give birth to the most intelligent children. Now this has been proven and there's been a lot of talk about it where people who have taken higher doses of iodine to clear out their bodies full of the bromine in their thyroid glands and the heavy metals and whatever bacteria and toxins have got in, in them and their children have been born 
much more, much, much brighter than the previous children they'd had before that. Much more intelligent. They don't. They, they only got to be shown things once, and they pick it up quickly. They learn to speak quicker, and also there are a few people who have studied iodine for years, doctors, Abrahams and Brownstein, and they've, they've had many cases of the children, of the offspring of women who've taken high, cut high doses of iodine for years, and they're confirming the same thing. These children are on a different level, of almost genius level. Why were they making this all up? Probably not. Because when you think about the other side of it, even intelligent people now who become deficient in iodine get brain fog, can't remember words. Basically, they're becoming stupid. I've, I've had it where I've just been stupid. I can't think straight. I can't... On a bad day... If I talk to people, I'm just getting confused and feel stupid. Come across as stupid. It's true. It's in this bit now. When a Japanese family emigrates to a different country, the children born to these people are still at the highest percentile of intelligence. This is a Japanese family who've had children, who've been eating 13 milligrams of iodine a day at least. So when they've moved to a different country, their offspring is still coming, still being born intelligent because they still, they go to a new country, but they're still looking for the foods they used to eat in. So they're still finding seaweeds and whatever they were eating in Japan. They're carrying on the traditional diets. But when it comes to second generation and third generation offspring from that family, the intelligence of their children drops to the same levels as that of the indigenous people of their new country. Facts are there. Facts are strong. What are you doing now, dog? She's eating a bit of wood or something. Don't eat wood. It's your birthday. Anyway, 13 milligrams of iodine that comes from sources, fish sources and seaweed sources, will have a lot more elemental iodine, which is easier for the body to synthesise and use than any supplementation. This is a natural iodine. It's made by plants and made by animal sources. And the body, when it eats that, it's just completely natural to it. Synthesised iodine is still good, but it's not, not half as good as from foods. So where are we? Are we? In order to get a similar amount of iodine a day by supplementation, like using Lugol's iodine drops, 25 milligrams of iodine could easily be consumed a day. So, like, that's like, if you, if we say 13 milligrams for a Japanese woman, is good. To get 13 milligrams using Lugol's, you're probably best taking 25 to make sure that might be, like, an equivalent amount. Any excess of iodine in the body can safely be excreted in the urine. There is no danger in taking iodine in doses up to 50 milligrams a day or higher for diseases like cancer. It's just like salt. Like if you eat too much salt, the kidneys and that will excrete excess amounts. In a healthy body, too much salt 
is okay if you're on an unhealthy diet, if you're eating processed salt, which isn't so good for you, and you're eating a very uh, high processed diet, and salt, the salt becomes bad for you. But on a good diet, we're eating rock salt, sea salt, you can eat more higher. The salt is needed by the body, it's the chlorine, chloride, not chlorine, chloride. Chloride is very good for you. Body needs a lot of it in order to be running optimally. Care must be taken to build up the amount of iodine you take a day as the thyroid needs to get used to the more iodine which is incoming. And the thyroid the body will flush out many toxins like the bromine, chloride, fluoride, and heavy metals. So, if your thyroid is only used to a tiny amount of iodine coming in, it like becomes programmed to suck in as much iodine as it can because it needs it, it's desperate for it. It's the most important organ of the body that needs iodine, and it's the body becomes will become sparing of iodine. It won't excrete any in the unit, urine, and your thyroid gland will be sucking as much as it can in. All of a sudden, you start eating higher doses. Thyroid gland, you get more iodine coming in. It expands because you go, whoa, look at all this iodine we've got. Because it's so used to only having a tiny amount, it actually expands so it can get more in. After a couple of days, when it gets used to it, oh, we're getting plenty in every day, it goes back to normal size. Any excesses, the thyroid, care must be taken to build up the amount of iodine you take a day. So if you start off re with a really high amount, the detox symptoms could be extreme and you could hurt your thyroid gland, you could get pain there, it could grow bigger. If you start off slow, you won't get them problems. You won't get the thyroid gland growing at all and you won't get so much detox symptoms, which you will get because we all been breathing in pollutants and toxins and heavy metals and fungi and bacteria. You will definitely get one or two days of a detox. People can have detox symptoms lasting a few days to a few weeks, depending how toxic their body is. A slow build-up of increasing iodine intake is the best way to go. A healthy body with healthy amounts of iodine will have about 1.5 grams of iodine throughout the body. That is a lot. 1.5 grams. We're talking milligrams a day supplementation and it's got 1.5 grams. If you're deficient, it will have nowhere near 1.5 grams. It'll be a lot less than that. Healthy body will have 1.5 grams. So take in 50 milli, if you can build up to that slowly, 50 milligrams a day is not a bad thing. A healthy body, as healthy amounts, I just read that, and I will have 1.5 grams of throughout the body. The thymus gland can hold, at the most, about 50 million gram, milligrams of iodine. The average person these days has only 20% of this or less. They have about 9 milligrams of iodine. 9 milligrams! Most people, average, is walking on with 9 milligrams or less of iodine in their thyroid gland. Where optimally, they should be having 50 milligrams. That's extreme. Why aren't we getting so nested or blood test results? Why aren't they saying, oh, you only got 20% 20, 20 of, your, of iodine, which you should have in your side your gland? You should build up a bit. Why aren't we being told this by the uh, doctors we visit? Why aren't they aware of this? Why is it being hidden? When the thyroid gland 
has only 20% of iodine. Chlorine, bromine and fluorine will fill up the other 80%, which will vastly decrease the production of thyroid hormone and other hormones like estrogen and other vital hormones for health. So basically we're not getting enough iodine to produce the thyroid hormones T4 and T3. We're becoming ill. Our thyroid is filling up with other toxins instead of iodine. So the body's attracting them. They're trying to use them instead. Desperate for use of something. So it's filling up with bromine, chlorine, fluorine. She's making us sick. The population of sick people. 20% of the body's total iodine is in the skin. With an iodine deficiency, the skin becomes very dry. There will become many more wrinkles that appear on the face. And there can be lots of skin problems like eczema, psoriasis, acne. Also, the lack of ability to sweat anymore and skin infections. Poor skin quality. Stopping the skin having the natural oils. Becoming dry, very dry. Have you ever been in the cold where your face becomes dry and cracked or your hands? I've had that. In the winter, my hands become cracked. All to do with iodine. People can look old before their time with low iodine. 32% of iodine is in the muscles and ligaments of the body. The deficiency of iodine in the muscles causes pain and is associated with fibromyalgia. Now I've had this for many years now. Painful muscles, painful joints, all the same. It turns out that there's a uh, build-up of like uh, fibric, the name fibristic. It can build up into cysts in the muscles and stuff like that. But uh, obviously, your muscles are painful because they haven't got the iodine to sort out any toxins or whatever, and to supply it with the proper nutrients, including fat. Because listen to this. 35% of iodine is in the fat cells of the body. Lack of iodine in the fat cell causes lipedema. Lipedema is a long-term condition that causes abnormal fat cells to build up in the lower part of the body, hips, legs, and sometimes in the arms. I've read this is mostly for women. Women get up, but I've seen a lot of women with these big, chunky, fat legs. Thin, thin on top, thin faces and everything, thin arms, and these big chunky legs. You can see they've got something wrong with them. And it could just be lack of iodine. If, you, if you, all your fat cells have been becoming ill like that, basically be all becoming inflamed, aren't they? How can your muscles work properly? No wonder we've so sick. Well, that's part one anyway. What I was going to do was, I was doing uh, loads of studying and information and writing things down. But today was such a nice day, I'll get out there and I'll do part one of what I've got. So there's lots of other things now which I could do, so I could do a part two. Just like to say, for me, on my ninth day, I have been uh, pretty much in detox. It's the first two or three days, maybe. Maybe the fourth day as well. I was feeling much better walking, much better energy. My legs didn't feel as heavy. I was doing great. But then uh, I think I started to get into detox then. Uh, I was getting a bit of brain fog. I'm feeling so great. And the walking wasn't so great. I was getting tired, tired more. Tired. Fatigue was my main symptom I got. Uh, my motivation was getting low and I. There's things I wanted to do and I just wanted to lay down. 
didn't have the energy. So I had a day off. I did a week exactly. I built up to um, about seven milligrams a day, which isn't a lot. Then I had a day off. Now I've come back. Uh, yesterday I had 10 milligrams. Uh, still feeling a bit of detox. So today I've cut it down. I'm only having five milligrams today. That's how I feel. But that's the way to go. You can, you can go every other day. You can have days off. You can have two days off. You can have more one day than the next day. Just go you feel. If you feel you're detoxing too quick. Obviously I must be like a high toxic buildup in me and I was definitely extremely lacking of iodine. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope we give you some thoughts about iodine. Lugol is the best, get the drops. I got a 12.5%, works out as 15 milligrams per drop. But I cut it out then, I, I put it into water so I, I can measure out how much drops is in each water. So I can have little tumbler folds with 3.75 milligrams in each. But, um, and I've been um, rinsing my mouth after I eat, brushing my teeth with the iodine water then, iodine water and swishing my mouth with it. And one thing I've noticed, this could be a big thing. Since the carnivore diet, which is six years now for me on 1st of November, I've always had a build-up of tartar, a strong build-up. I've got to keep scraping it off. I've got these dentist tool things I use, stainless steel dentist things to scrape off the plaque. Now I've noticed since using this iodine just to use as a mouthwash, a solution not strong enough to make any burning in my mouth, but uh, strong enough to wash the gums and give a good wash to the teeth, teeth and gums. Definitely much less plaque, if any. I'm trying to find new plaque build-up. I'm not seeing any. I've been scraping it off from previous. Now, normally I check my teeth a few days later and I can see plaque starting to build up again. None. And my gums look healthier. Again, they've looked great since I've been on carnivore. They were terrible before carnivore, absolutely atrocious. I had breeding gums, receding gums, teeth going loose. I'd have lost my teeth by now if I went for carnivore. Carnivore has helped me so much. Even though I haven't got better, now I'm putting it down to the iodine. And if you um, check out Ferringo, Ferringo's channel. I'll put a link in my description. Check out, I'll give you a link to one of his videos. He has also found he's going to be iodine deficient and he's got into adding iodine. So I'll put a link to one of his videos, which is good. He's got a few. Anyway, I'll leave it at that for now. I'll give an update in a few days, probably when I've done six years, my six year anniversary update. And hopefully I'll do part two on iodine soon with more of an update how I'm doing on it. Okay, thanks for watching. Leave a comment and all that. Like and subscribe. Thanks for listening. If you've made it this far, like I say, that's good. That's great. Thanks. Cheers. Bye for now. Bye. Say bye. This is... <sighs> Bye.